Well, I am very, very blessed today to have a, I was going to say an old friend, but really a long time friend. Uh, we're both from the same hometown, Topeka, Kansas. And I don't know when I first met Henry, but it seems like I've known Henry a good portion of my life anyway. And uh, as old as I am, that means it's been a long time. And our paths have crossed numerous times over the years. And we worked very closely together here in the state of Illinois a number of years ago. Unfortunately, over circumstances and situations, uh, our paths have not crossed as much as I would have liked, uh, but we were able to meet up again here again recently, and I was so blessed with Sheila and I and our conversation with Henry. God inspired me to ask him to teach on the spot while we were talking, and that <laughs> today is a result of that. So... Uh, <laughs> I have always been blessed by Henry when he shares the word. I have to tell you, one of the first times I heard Henry share the word, he blew me away, not only because of his knowledge of the word, but because of how he teaches that word. And so I think that Henry will be a very big blessing for each one of your lives today. If you have not met Henry, this will be your introduction to him. And I guarantee it'll be a positive impact on your life. So I'm going to turn it over to my good friend, Henry, and it's all yours. Love you, brother. Love you. Oh, that's amazing. I remember uh, sitting down, finalizing some things on a coaching service I was going to make available to people. CelebrateCoaching.com. And right when I launched that thing, an email came up, said, Mike Lawrence, give me a call. <laughs> and I thought that was just really quite unusual and quite a blessing. Well, I'm going to take a little bit different approach today. I want to present you with some ideas that you can possibly experiment with, be curious about. I want to couch those ideas starting with a premise, choice points. Choice points. The way I like to describe this is moments in time where decisions are made. Now, at those points in time, choice points always have a destination. They always have a destination. So when we're going to make choice points, it's good to be have clarity, have awareness. Remember our values. Remember whether we're being motivated by love, by fear. So that'll be one idea I want to just, just throw out there for you to be curious about. And then I want to go through three things today. That is being here now, that is how neuroplasticity works. And then tying that with the connection that God shows us how to make with his word that promises the greatest depth available in God's word. I'm going to throw that out there. Yes, sir, I am. And you can check it out, but we're going to tie all this together. So stay with me. So the first part of the story is being here now. We have the dimensions of time, the past, the present, the future. We want to be here, but sometimes the past is calling us. Sometimes the future, unless we can be here now, how can we live from here? Do we find ourselves living from maybe when we were 35 and we were really doing well? <laughs> Do we find ourselves, if we're continuing to grow and change every day, which we are, it's sort of like the seasons. There's summer, 
uh, you know, how, how they go spring, summer. It isn't like spring starts one day and then summer's here. There's a period of time for each of those. And so are those periods of times for our lives. We are not even the same person today that we were yesterday because of choices, because of thoughts, because of things we decided to apply and learn. Constant change. So where are we now? What if we could, could really grasp the power of the moment? And that's what I want to try to do for you. One of the things that um, we're just going to casually take a look at brain and nervous system. The brain is responsible, even though it assigns different circuitry for different things. The brain's responsibility is to bring in data. Through all the sensors, bring in data continuously, non-negotiable, any data, bring it in. It assesses that data and continues to refresh our system. We're gonna take a look at one little piece of it for just a moment here. Just think about your five senses, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. Most times, if we're not centered, we don't even notice. You know, we notice, yeah, the, the dog's over there chewing my shoe, you know, when you go by or you could smell something, something's burning, you know, but think about those for a moment, just it's all happening because you have this magnificent organism that God has given you to live in with your God and Christ in you and with who you are. Oh man, is that amazing how this thing works. So the brain. It's checking things out. We're going to look at the sensory piece of it for just a moment here. Just think about it. Like uh, uh, if, if you say, take a look for a moment what you're seeing. Listen for a moment what you're hearing. Smell what you're smelling. Never chew another bite of food unless you actually taste it. Look at all we just go right over. What if we could be here now? A lot of those connections with the senses are on the right side of your brain, the side that flourishes. So even it's also a great way to make everything stop for a moment, either by your breath or one of those senses. But just think, if you could actually, I play this little game with myself where all during the day I play this, but okay, hearing, okay, what are you guys on to now? You know, go, oh, okay, smelling, smelling, what's going up in that section? But just think where all of those connect is where we are here now, because the brain is continually refreshing all of that data. The nervous system is monitoring sensations, perceptions, feelings, thoughts, behaviors. And it always looks at things in duration, path, outcome. Duration, path, outcome. So moving on from the senses, but even if you were to be able to bring yourself to being there in the moment, how would life change? I'm going to read this one thing about the moment. To allow ourselves to be truly in touch with where we already are, no matter where that is, we've got to pause in our experience long enough to let the moment sink in, long enough to actually feel the present moment, to see it in its fullness, to hold it in awareness, to thereby come to know and understand it better. Only then can we accept the truth of this moment of our lives and learn from it and move on. Instead, often, it seems we are preoccupied with the past, with what has already happened, or with the future, what will come. Mike talked about he and I our paths hadn't crossed for a long time. And look at here, in this moment, 
here we are. Is that amazing? So anyway, I want to keep going with this because this is just amazing. So the brain is responsible for continuing to bring in information according to all that sensory. And, and then the nervous system is going to be watching over sensations, perceptions, feelings, thoughts, behaviors. All of this is to make sure that internally we're ready to handle what's going on around us. And sometimes we just casually do that. Like we get to work, we don't even remember how we, we don't even remember driving, but everything was so locked in, got us there. That's the kind of unit God has given us to house us while we're here on this earth. Now I say this, love ourselves unconditionally. Well, I, I love everything about me, Lord, except for that one toe, that one big toe. No, no, no. Love ourselves unconditionally. We love God. We love ourselves. When we love ourselves unconditionally, it's like opening the doors to the greenhouse we have in the backyard. You know, you've seen some of those greenhouses where people grow flowers and all kinds of fruits and vegetables. And when you open that, the smell the smell of things that are alive and the colors of the flowers. That's what we're missing when we don't love ourselves unconditionally. Unconditionally. See? So you got this body. It's going around. God has set up this organism to, to help you get through life, go through dangers, go over things, all those kinds of things. The fastest way, the fastest way of getting something input is taking that list, sensation, perceptions, feelings, thoughts, behaviors, go the behaviors, go the behaviors. And once we get to this section of the word that has magnanimous depth to it, and God says, I'm going to give you access, watch all the verbs that are used. It's going to be amazing. Okay, so uh, how this thing works is the brain is reflexive, likes to do things, get your coffee, read an article, you know, <laughs> go through these things, loves to do these things. But then when we focus on something, when we really put focus on something, either something new, maybe it's a project we need to do, we put that focus, there's something that happens. And what that is, is there's a neurochemical called acetylcholine. And when we focus on something to either apply action or do something, that acetylcholine is like the spotlight. It um, sends a nutrient to those specific neurons that were involved in that change, those specific ones, and it marks them for change. During the next deep sleep, uh, next deep rest or deep sleep, change will occur. Those neurons will have a link that's hot and ready to go. But at the same time, other, other, uh, now that's from the, the whole uh, stress architecture. At, at the same time, when there's that focus, we get uh, norepinephrine and also uh, adrenaline or noradrenaline, they are like the stress that says, okay, that's what you want to do. Okay. You'll notice that little nervous kind of anxiety, like you're going to jump into a big project or what. There's that little nervous kind of anxiety. That's that, that norepinephrine, that adrenaline saying, okay, that's what you're focusing on. Let's go. And you, through anything that you go through, you have to go through that door. And that's where many people quit, like, oh, I'm feeling a little anxious. I better sit down for a few minutes until I calm down. No, 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 no. It's you, everything passes through that gate. All new learning, new application, things that you're going to apply. It passes through that gate. Acetylcholine lights it up. Those neurons marks them for change. The adrenaline, the norepinephrine say, okay, let's go, let's go. 
has to go through that gate. Now, as you get through that gate and you start moving, you start having success, dopamine comes in. Dopamine comes in and pushes back that stress. So sometimes, you know, you, you start to get more focus. You're a little more focused. You're, you, you went all the way till 12 o'clock at night. Your wife's in bed and you so got into this thing because the focus broadened. The dopamine came in. This is how God set it up to work. See? So that's really what that neuroplasticity is. Oh, got to get this. I got a great uh, note that I wrote for myself. Um, uh, see, see, it, 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 here's how it works. From age one to 25, your brain was very malleable. You could learn things, learn things quickly, learn five languages with no, no accent. The goal was to come up with a circuitry that you could go on for the rest of life. But that neuroplasticity, the brain has an ability to change by experience. By experience, it can re-imprint that circuitry. See, so I, I think that's that's all pretty cool. So now, now let's take a look at how number one, being at one with ourselves, knowing that we love God, loving ourselves unconditionally, being present. Where we're not caught between the past, the future, but we are here now where our God says, you know, I'm here with you, kid. Go ahead. Let's go. Let's rock this thing. And then you got this cool SUV engine, <laughs> you know, this cool body that can do so many things. And how God has set it up so that the brain can be changed by experience. Now we're going to take a look at Proverbs. We're going to read it. I'm going to read it with you in the King James, and then I'm going to read you about four other translations. But watch this entry. This entry. Uh, uh, let, let's look at verse five. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, the love, respect, the awe, and find the knowledge of God. Holy cow. Find me another verse. That's a big one. Henry, that, you're in that's chapter huge. Two. Henry, you're in chapter two. Yeah, yeah. Yes, chapter two. Did I say one? I'm sorry. Chapter two, verses one through five. But look at that promise there. Understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Now let's watch God's pathway that he shows us and how to get in there. Remember, even with that neural system, I told you how it's uh, duration, path, outcome, sensations, perceptions, feelings, thoughts, behaviors. Sometimes it takes a while to work through all of that, but getting to behaviors the quickest, then thoughts are influenced, feelings are influenced, persuasions are influenced. Let's see what God has to say about the pathway. Look at this, two, verse one. My son, if, if thou wilt receive now, I can have this pathway. Look at this. God's going to show us this pathway to greatness. Finding the knowledge of God. Let's see how it works because I could use this everywhere. If thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, 
if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Holy smokes. It's like, hey, there's a trail. Go to Proverbs 2, 1 through 5. There's a trail. Now I'm going to read you a couple of these other translations. That was from the King James. I want to read from the, the New King James. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and lay up my commandments with thee, so as to incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, Yea, if thou criest after discernment, and lift up thy voice for understanding, if thou seek her as silver, and search for her as hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of Jehovah. Okay, I got a couple more here. I want to go to uh, the New Living Translation. My child... Listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain the knowledge of God. Amplified Bible, two more of these. My son, if you will receive my words and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to skillful and godly wisdom and inclining and directing your heart and mind to understanding, applying all your powers in the quest for it. Yes, if you will cry out for insight, raise your voice for understanding. If you seek wisdom as for silver and search, excuse me, for skillful and godly wisdom as hidden treasures, then you will understand the reverent and worship of fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of the omniscient God. And finally, one more. The Message Bible. Good friend, take to heart what I'm telling you. Collect my counsels and guard them with your life. Tune your ears to the world of wisdom. Set your heart on a life of understanding. That's right. If you make insight your priority and won't take no for an answer, searching for it like a prospector panning for gold, like an adventurer on a treasure hunt, believe me, before you know it, the fear of God will be yours. and you will have come upon the knowledge of God. Now it's interesting when you think about how the nervous system works, how the brain is set up to where it can be changed by experience, by when that focus is there, that acetylcholine lights up those neurons, says, whoa, marks those for change, The adrenaline nor Ephraim say, okay, get moving, get moving. You get through that gate and then the dopamine starts calming down that stress. That's how all learning, you got to go through that gate. That's why a lot of people quit. But look at how God lays out how to get to some of the greatest treasure anywhere. I, I had a note about 
uh, I was looking in Ecclesiastes that was showing, uh, Solomon was saying, you know, I started out, I was searching for this wisdom. You know, I tried so hard. I looked at all these things. He said, but I could barely get close. It was so deep. And look what God's showing us here. Look what God's showing us here. But look at the way. <laughs> the way has a lot of do's in it. There's listen. There's apply your heart. There's cry out. There's seek. There's search. There's find. Being here now. Understanding how this body works understanding the connection that God's word says needs to be applied to get to the depth of it. That is what I want you to be curious about today. And that's a little bit of what I wanted you to experiment with. Gracious and loving heavenly father, we're so thankful for your dynamic people people that you have raised to life, people that you've given the power to accomplish what your word says is available. Thank you for the victory that's ours today in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, for bringing us out of the light and into, out of the darkness and into the light where we thrive as mirrors of your greatness and of your power. Bless your people. Hold back no blessing from them, Father. Bless them exceedingly with all good things that their lives may be plentiful physically. Thank you for being our God and our guide and for always being with us each and every moment. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.